Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Echo Chamber. I'm your host, Jay Echo. What's good? Hope y'all have been good, taking care of yourselves. Hope you're, uh, hope you're feeling all right. Hope you're uh, enjoying getting back to normal every day and everything like that. Uh, you know, in our previous sessions, we've, uh, we've talked a little bit about psychology, you know, well, my basic understanding of psychology. And today that's going to continue. Today uh, we're, uh, you know, last, last episode I spoke about Carl Jung. This episode I'm going to speak about Freud. You know, Freud these days is, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, he's sort of fallen out of favor. A lot of people don't really think Freud knew what he was talking about, but there are a couple concepts that he did explain that uh, I'm going to uh, take a look at today to, uh, you know, to uh, explain something or to work through something that I've been thinking about recently, which uh, which touches on a couple of the things that Freud used to talk about. And the, the major piece that I'm going to discuss is the ego. But in order to get to that, we're going to go through a couple other of his principles. So Freud, for the most part, his uh, like the main three things he liked to talk about were the uh, the id, the ego and the superego. For all those of you who don't know, the id was sort of your uh, your instinct your instincts so you know all of the stuff that deals with your impulses your desires all of that sort of stuff um your ego was sort of the uh well we'll start with the super ego the super ego was sort of your uh your 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 moral center you know the part of you that's like the ideal that you're striving towards and then there was the ego that's sits in the middle and sort of negotiates the difference between the ego and the, the id and the super ego. So, um, you know, you hear a lot about, you know, how, how fragile people's egos are, or, you know, that's, that's usually the context we hear about the ego, but, um, I'm not so much going to talk about that. Well, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but, I'm mostly interested in figuring out how the ego sort of betrays you or the id betrays you and the, uh, the ego can sometimes fail to uh, fail to make up the difference. Cause one of the things that we, uh, we often overlook is that the, the id, that part of us that just our instincts take over and we just want things, whether it's food, sex, sleep, all of that sort of stuff. There's no rational brain behind that. There's no, there's no reality behind that oftentimes, you know, but at the, in the same vein, you know, the, uh, the super ego in the same vein is, can be just as irrational, you know, because the superego is essentially the all of the ideas that you learn, that you see, that you pick up from other people, that you use to form this, this pristine picture in your head of like, this is what I should be as a, as a human being, as a person. This is what I should strive towards. So the ego... It's supposed to work as the, uh, the the negotiator between those two things, but it doesn't ever say anything about whether those two things are reasonable. So if you're if you're working between two unreasonable standards, then obviously the negotiation is going to be flawed, and that's how your ego betrays you. So, for instance, we will. I'll speak from personal experience, like you'll have this unrealistic idea in your head of what the ideal man is, for instance. But then at the same time, you have these urges that sort of show up that you have to like you. Well, as you grow older, you, you ideally should gain a little bit more control over it. But, you know, things like, oh, I'm hungry, you know, that urge to eat 
isn't rational. There's no logic behind it. It just shows up. So, for instance, like the urge for sex, we'll, we'll go from there. That urge, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different, and this is where I guess Freud sort of falls apart. So, you know, take all that with a grain of salt. But sex, that urge can just bubble up for some people. It's like, all right, I'm horny. Cool. Fine. There might not be anything wrong with that, but... If that urge is bumping up against this idea in your head, like, oh, uh, for instance, the the um, the abstinence education principle for for sex, like, oh, all sex is wrong unless you're married and all of your urges are inherently ego, inherently evil, your ego at that point. Is going, to cl- is going to clash with those things because it's like, all right, this is something my body is calling out for. And no matter how much I recognize in my head, uh, well, the, the, the premise is flawed that sex is inherently evil because, I mean, it just is. Sex isn't inherently evil. It's just when, where, consent, all of those sorts of things need to be taken into account. But... If we're going based off of the uh, the abstinence uh, education model that some places have adopted when it comes to sex, then your ego is going to say like, but I want this thing, but everything my super ego was telling me, which is, again, all of the ideas and, and notions that you've built out, that you've learned to create this perfect picture in your mind are telling you that that is wrong. And then that leads to your ego doing backflips and, 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 and kick flips and all sorts of things to try and figure out how to justify this natural urge that you have. And that can be damaging to some people, you know, and the same thing applies when like the, uh, the ideal that you're striving for towards is inherently dangerous. So, will transition to something like toxic masculinity. Like, all right, your id is telling you, yes, I want sex. And whether you're you're heterosexual, homosexual, transsexual, pansexual, whatever, whatever you want to call yourself, or whatever you are, I should say. <clears throat> if you have all of those, you have that but toxic masculinity is established in this very heteronormative idea of what sex is, then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you're doing harm to yourself and the people around you and your ego will betray you because it's like, well, I'm striving towards this idea, but the idea is inherently flawed. So I guess the, uh, the, the one thing I want people to take away from this little this little i guess work through or thought process or whatever you want to call it is that sometimes you need to examine where where your morals where your ideals where your basis where your foundation lies you need to examine it very carefully sometimes because in situations where you're damaging not only yourself but the people around you who you claim you love then that's one of two things either your ideal is incorrect or their ideal is incorrect and it's easier to examine your ideals than to examine somebody else's so start with yourself first. And, you know, as I, as I always say on this show, take personal responsibility and do the work on yourself and the rest will sort itself out. So, all right, that's, uh, that's episode three of uh, the Echo Chamber. Take it easy, y'all. Take care of yourselves. Peace.